So welcome everyone to the first installment of HEAL. <laughs> We're very excited for this program. Uh, as many of you know, uh, Elevate Akron, the annual yoga festival and organization, unfortunately had to postpone this year. But we really wanted to keep the movement and the energy of this uh, community gathering alive. Um, and we really want to be there for our community for healing and this, um, this is time of need. So the way that we're doing that amongst many ways is starting with this amazing HEAL programming, helping to elevate Akron Live. Um, and so every week on Sundays at noon, we're going to be featuring a different community leader um, who will be answering questions around uh, health, uh, around connection, around service. And um, part of this will be a, a Q&A. So at the start, the first 10 to 15 minutes, we'll get to have like a lovely interactive question and answer. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we'll have a guided practice. So we'll get to have like a little experiential um, learning opportunity. Uh, and also we're encouraging everyone to stay engaged throughout. So whether you're on Zoom or Facebook, you can also participate. Uh, and um, if you want to participate, um, especially if you're on Facebook, you can see we'll post some of these questions around what does service mean to you? What is, um, why is connection important? How are you building connection in the community? Um, and how is the healthy living practice that um, we're sharing speaking to you? So at any point, uh, we, we'd encourage you if something just really resonates to, to comment. And if you comment, ask a question, like, and share, at the end, we'll not only um, take an audience question to be addressed, but also over the next 24 hours, you'll be entered into an, an awesome drawing for some prizes, which are uh, a little secret right now. We'll announce the prizes at the end, but they're good and you want them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's, it's just my great honor and pleasure to get to introduce our guest today. Uh, she's someone who in my own life has been truly impactful. Uh, she's the co-founder of Elevate Akron and one of the driving forces to starting this community uh, movement. Um, she's also been one of my own teachers uh, and with, you know, uh, Yoga School of Yoga 108, um, she offers vinyasa yoga and kundalini yoga classes, 250 or 200 and 500 level teacher trainings. Um, as well as educational workshops and private yoga life coaching. So um, we're so excited to have her on today. Welcome, Tracy. Hello. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. My cheeks already hurt. I can't stop smiling. And I have to say, I'm so delighted to be here. Um, and I'm even more delighted to see and to feel how you have picked up the baton and how you're carrying Elevate Akron, the whole initiative, the whole mission, how you're carrying it forward so creatively, so relevant to what's going on in our world. Um, just really, really thrilled and excited. And um, yeah, I really honor your work and the work of your committee. Thank you so much for having me. Oh yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, it's, um, it's real easy after uh, getting to, to follow in the, the footsteps and uh, you, you paved a lovely way. So um, the first question, we'll just go ahead and, and dive right into it. Um, the first question is all around service. So Tracy, um, you know, I, I just love to hear more about what service means to you and the sort of the, the service that you do and why it's so important. Yeah, it's a really, um, yeah, it's a really important question for these times. Um, you know, the world is shifting, it's changing. And um, I personally am growing and developing as, you know, each of us is. So my definition and what service looks like to me has had to evolve and grow as well. So I've been thinking lately, really about service in two threads, like service can be the things we do. And service can be the way we be. And so like in this era, which is an era of technology, an era of information and energy, then it's not just our actions that are important, although certainly those are necessary and impactful, but it's really interesting to start to get a feel for and a sense of how we be mm -hmm. and the energy we hold in our beingness 
and how that in and of itself can be offered in a gift of service. And it's a gift of service to maybe one particular person, but it's most certainly a big gift of service to the collective, to the community as a whole. And um, even if you think of your energetic presence as a gift of service to the planet itself, like how do we heal the planet? How do we heal the world we, we um, live in? How do we provide service to all of that really, um, oh, it's a weighty, big <laughs> need <laughs> is, you know, like you can do a few things, but what's new and exciting about these times is we have an opportunity to um, up level our energetic expression mm. and to become a gift of service in our own organized energetic presence and being. And mm. I think that um, the, this is the time for that. And mm. the practices that I've been exploring have been very impactful and empowering to me to feel like I'm not like drawing myself or collapsing myself into the collective fear that I'm able to hold myself in a stronger, um, clear, aligned light space, which mm. is a gift of service. Mm. So even if I feel like I haven't done much, have I been able to be much, mm. right? When I walk through, um, say, you know, I shop at Hyman's, it's here local to me and it's a part of my community. When I walk through that location, what I'm doing is getting groceries for my family, but how I'm being might be a gift of service to the other shoppers, the other um, the employees that work there. Um, all of that can be um, really a beautiful gift. And in these days, that's that's important. Like how we be. Like, are we able to give space to the people around us so that they feel safe? Are we able to just like put the mask on so that we don't accidentally share something we don't want to share? Or you know, can we just be respectful to the collective and what is going on? You know, in our culture at this time. And all of that, you know, you haven't really done much, but getting into the beingness of who we are and how we present ourselves, how we hold our energy is, um, it's a gift of service and it's mm. a, um, it's a skill. So I've been practicing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate that share around doing and being and how to recognize that th these are really times that are just so important for being and it, it's just so essential that we, we recognize that there's value there, that we don't need to be doing more. And just the way that we be and show up in our presence, um, even if it's something small, like if we're doing the action of going to the grocery store, you know, the way that we, and we wear the mask to be safe, but the way that we're showing up there um, harmoniously and in these times is so important. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm sure the more I practice being light and lovely and patient and kind and, and cultivating an energy like that, you know, I'm real sure that my family notices. Mm. And then that gives them, I'm not even, I don't even say an example, it gives them space to be the same, right? Mm. It gives them space to elevate themselves to a less front free grumpy kind of attitude, regardless of their challenges. So, you know, we can all lift each other up that way, which mm. connection. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is <laughs> your great transition here. And, and so, you know, this is, this is the other big thing, you know, and, and with, you know, Elevate, we're really trying to recognize the importance of being connected, not only with ourselves, but each other. Um, and, you know, obviously this is a time where connection is changing. And I'm just curious um, what you can share about the importance of, of staying connected and, and, you know, what connection means to you and, and the connected community. Yeah, it's been interesting because I'm not necessarily a technology person. You know, I kind of, I'm a little bit of that older generation that's just like, you know, I do it. I learned how, but I wasn't like, hooray, I get to Zoom all day. You know, that wasn't like where I was going. <laughs> but what I've been surprised about is how powerful and clear the connection is with people when I'm online. Like I've been surprised at how I am able to feel the, um, the relationship and the relay between myself and my students, myself and my family when we get together online, mm. myself and my friends, because now I'll say, can we Zoom? Can we FaceTime? I want to see you. Like, whereas before it was just, yeah, text me, email me, you know, we'll talk for a moment, you know, on speakerphone while I do other things. Now it's like, no, I want to see you. Let's FaceTime. Mm. Let's, let's put the Zoom camera on. 
and let's connect. And I've been surprised at how tangible that is. The other thing that's on my mind around connection is this idea that um, we have to feel ourselves in order to be present with ourselves. And if we fail to have like that personal connection, because you're right, it starts personally, right? Mm -hmm. So like if we fail to like feel ourselves and fail to connect to our own presence, then we're only feeling the environment. And the environment, like it will bump and, and it will grind at us. Like it'll push us here and there. And so I've been noticing more um, opportunity to strengthen my own connection. And then I feel sturdier when I go out places and I'm in other environments. And so this connection here has allowed me to be less, um, to be more stable and less knocked off by the environment. And then when I've got this, I can really reach out, mm. right? Then I know like I've got the ground to reach out and find my neighbors, um, my family, whether they're near or they're far. Like I, I don't feel like I have to do something while I'm talking to them, right? Like I don't, it doesn't have to be on speakerphone. I don't mind putting down what I'm doing because I've got like some ground underneath me. And then that connection feels like really welcome right mm. rather than what do you want like you know you're interrupting me like mm. oh yeah yeah i'm right here with you no no no, no. like this i'm right here with you mm. like and, and then the connection you know allows for a relay that's really respectful and honest and clear mm. does that make sense absolutely yeah i, I think what you're saying is it's like really when you get that personal ground and being in presence how that then allows you to show up in the way that you're, you know, connecting with others, especially now digitally. We're finding that you don't need to multitask and do one thing while you're on the phone cooking or whatever, you know, but to really fully to have the image, the video and the audio and to just be there fully in this moment. Yeah, because we could like hole up in our houses and feel so sad and disconnected. Or we could develop a relevant current skill set of connecting in meaningful ways mm. given the circumstances we're in. Mm. And then I don't have to complain about how long has it been and this must be Groundhog Day or these unforeseen times or whatever, you know, like I don't have to lament because mm. I'm busy getting myself together so that I can like be with you. Mm. you know? And I can hear how my son is doing on the other side of the country and I can connect with my parents who can't get out you know, who are older and more vulnerable and, and can't get out at all. So, you know, that's service, connection, like all of this ends up being such an important package mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think this is kind of alludes into sort of our, you know, our last question really around, you know, healthy living and practices to be well. And, you know, I would love if you could, you know, just share maybe a tip on, um, you know, some of your own tips for, you know, healthy living or, you know, one tip for wellness that, that you'd like everyone to, to think I about. I know. Like I was like, oh my goodness, he's going to ask me for a tip. <laughs> what tip should it be, right? Like what tip should it be? I brought a meditation today mm. and the meditation goes through each, each energy center, each chakra center. Mm. And when I share the meditation, I'll talk through that for anyone who, you know, that might be new to. But this idea that we want a personal connection that's very tangible in terms of how am I feeling, where am I right now? Mm -hmm. And we want to offer a beingness that's light and vibrant and, and um, you know, lovely. Then my tip is going to be to check in with that, right? And so when I first get up in the morning, I'll do a mental check-in through my energy centers because they're in my body and they get me like the right here of it. Mm. And they are the tangible in a physical sense so that I'm not mentally scattered. Mm. And so that I'm remembering that I want this energy to be aligned and well offered today. So when I'm getting up, um, perhaps when I'm driving somewhere, when I sit down and I have a task to do and I'm like, okay, and I feel scattered, I'm like, how can I, I got to get started on this. 
then it's like, it just takes two or three deep breaths and we'll use a little mantra today that your you know, folks are welcome to adapt as their own too. Um, it just takes a couple breaths to come up and down the spinal line. And so my tip is to get really physical and tangible with where you are and mm. how you are and to make that checking in a part of your daily habit. And even in my craziest times, like I taught preschool special ed in the public schools and it was like, you know, <laughs> eight to 16 kids in a classroom, many of whom had disabilities, you know, and different behavior issues. Like it was a chaotic setting. And so in those days with all of that environmental, like I said, it bumped and it bounced off of me, you know, like I would use an extra few breaths when I went to the bathroom or while I was washing my hands and getting paint, finger paint and glue off my hands. Like I would use those moments to say, just like deep breath up and down the spine, check in to like continue this practice all day long of reorganize, reset, realign, you know, return, like mm -hmm. stay with yourself. So that's my tip is just, just get something little like that that lets you check in throughout the day so that you can um, serve, connect, and heal. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 such a beautiful tip to have those daily check-ins. And uh, I, I think we're all really excited to see your practice. And before you know we get started with it, I'll just I just want to remind everyone if if you're tuned in to feel free to ask any questions, if anything spoke to you about, you know, healthy living or connection or service to chat in the comments. Um, but we're gonna have this really um, wonderful practice with Tracy um, that she's gonna guide here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super, super excited to share this meditation from the Kundalini Yoga Practices. And um, if you check my website, I have a Q&A on my Kundalini page, which will tell you a lot more about Kundalini Yoga. Um, it's one of those practices that sometimes has a little bit of a misunderstanding or um, an unknowingness that mm. makes people hesitate to approach it. So um, there's a lot of good information there. Or if you just want to drop a question into the chat box, um, yeah, Kevin and I would be happy to field that. So this is a seven way Satnam meditation and we are going to use the mantra Satnam. Now Sat is truth. Nam is name. So it's like this true name, true identity. And mm -hmm. sometimes we think of it like my human name is Tracy. And then I have this spirit trueness, truthness inside me, um, as do each of us, right? And so we think of true name that way. But sometimes I think of it like um, as in a request or a prayer, like mm -hmm. show me the truth, show me beyond the illusion, show me beyond my addictions and my beliefs and my expectations, show me beyond my limits and my fears and my grudges and um, yeah, all the things I haven't yet forgiven, like show me what's true beyond that. Mm -hmm. So it's Satnam and um, we're just going to be seated in an easy sit with eyes closed. And we're going to chant Sat for a long strand of time. And each time we're, we're going to pulse seven times. So sa like seven pulses. And each pulse, I'd like you to just walk your mind's eye up your energy system. So starting at the base of your body, that's the first chakra. So that would be the first pulse. And then the second is at your low belly. That would be your second pulse. And the third is at the base of the ribs. So a pulse there. And then at the heart, at the throat, at the third eye. And when we get to the crown of the head, we'll chant Nam. It's N-A-M, rhymes with mom, Nam. <laughs> and the Nam sound, if you'd like, you can feel like the vibration is coming out of the head and just sort of descending and enveloping and cascading around you. And then we'll start down at the bottom again. So sa Nam. Right. So the hands will be at the heart and I'm going to start with, um, you take a few breaths. I'm just going to tune us in really quickly. Om namo gurudev namo om namo gurudev namo om namo gurudev namo And we'll just start with a deep breath in and a sigh out. You're welcome to chant, you're welcome just to listen. Inhale. Sat Nam Inhale Sat 
Feel yourself. Know that you just being you, connected, well aligned, is an act of service and a gift. It's a gift of self healing and community healing and world healing. May the long time sun shine upon you. May all love surround you. And may the pure light within you guide your way on. Thumb knuckles to your forehead. Satnam. Feel good? You need your mic back on. There you are. Ah, uh, that was so lovely, Tracy. Yeah, I hope you feel really good. I hope everyone feels really good. Yeah, it's yeah. really simple. You don't have to sit and chant. You know, once you practice, um, you know, you can sit and do it every day, but, um, you know, you'll find that you can mentally just without anyone even knowing, come through that little wave up your spine and um, clear yourself so that you can have that little healthy tip <clears throat> available for always being your best. Mm. Yeah, you. it's so great because you know what we're really looking for in, in these HEAL series is not just opportunities to learn about our local community and but really resources for how we can show up and be of service and connection and and healthy living and not to just to know it but to have skills and techniques to live this out yeah. um so this is so amazing <laughs> um, yeah you're not alone you know no one's alone we're here all practicing and um just a click away anytime yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, we're going to check in on if there's any been any audience questions, um, and we might be able to take a, a Q and A on here. Um, so if anyone has any questions at this point, we have a chance for a live uh, question to be answered. Um, but also, if you know you're tuning into this and it's not live, and something really spoke to you. Um, we'd encourage you to still, you know, ask questions, you know, share how in your own life are you showing up and living a healthy life um, that's connected and of service, maybe relevant to, you know, uh, what the lessons Tracy shared with us today. Um, and also, uh, if you do ask uh, a question, um, like and share, we have some prizes for everyone. <laughs> uh, <there's> so. <laughs> Yeah, Tracy, you want to um, share some of the prizes people can win to, um, from this, this program today? Yeah, I've got a logo coffee mug here, and I get really great feedback about these. They keep your um, hot drinks super hot. I have some hot water and um, actually collagen <laughs> in mine today. So a little, yeah, I think it's fine, but a little less delicious than maybe other times. Um, so I'd love to share one of these to someone. And um, I've got a great hoodie with the logo on the back and all kinds of great detail. And again, like folks have loved these. They're super soft um, and easy to wear, a lot of great detailing and the sleeves are really cool. Um, so yeah, I'd love to share this to someone. Um, and I'm also happy to offer a five class pass. Right now at Yoga 108, all of the classes are offered online. I have a small space. So given the Ohio State guidelines, I'm going to continue to offer classes online where I can connect to more people and um, yeah, not feel so limited by you know, the current circumstances. So yeah, like I'd ha be really happy I teach vinyasa classes and kundalini classes. So if kundalini isn't your jam, you're welcome to um, join me for vinyasa classes. And if the vinyasa is a little more athletic than you want it to be, then join me for kundalini because there is some really great dynamic movement that's very approachable and accessible to all different um, you know, body needs and types. And the meditations are incredibly impactful, very impactful mm -hmm. for your body system. Um, so yeah. So five classes, a hoodie, and a travel mug. Mm -hmm. Ask away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and again, too, so these, um, everyone, you have a chance to engage for the next 24 hours. We're going to announce the winners on Monday at noon. So um, if you didn't get a chance to tune in live now, there's always a chance to stay engaged there. And um, if you have questions about, um, you know, anything from Tracy, myself, or the Elevate community, um, we'll hop on Facebook and we'll be engaging on there. Um, also, though, we want to know that if anyone else wants to, um, you know, participate in these programs, um, whether this is through, um, you know, you know, being, uh, you know, someone who's, um, you know, wanting to be a, a guest on the show, um, heal, or if you're wanting to be a nonprofit partner as a guest, as a sponsor, um, or a volunteer, you know, we'd love to engage with you. So also feel free to reach out. I think we got a few of our, um, you know, questions today. Um, so we have one from Anne. Let's go ahead and take Anne. So Anne, can you describe a little bit, or Tracy, can you describe a little bit more of Kundalini Yoga? Yeah, I'd be really happy to. Um, you know, when we think about Hatha Yoga and the whole family of Hatha Yoga, whether it's power yoga um, or vinyasa yoga um, or, you know, more of a true Hatha style, it really addresses the skeletal muscular system. You do some breathing and there's some impact to the whole system because of that breath and the movement. But, you know, it's a skeletal muscular breath practice, really. Um, mm -hmm. In the Kundalini practices, there is some movement, yes, but there's a lot more breath and the movements are intended to stimulate the endocrine system, the immune system, the digestive system, um, and the nervous system. So they're using more of what we consider Eastern in terms of the meridians and the values to intentionally and purposefully move the body in ways that create a particular impact. So in Kundalini, they talk about the technologies of the practice. 
So it's a much more, you know, people will think of it because, you know, the folks wear white and stuff. They think of it more of a spiritual practice, but in fact, it's really less of a mystical practice, more of a technology of just this is the body instrument and how can we work the inner energies in really specific, potent ways in order to have a particular impact. So you'll see that I just did a series on prosperity. I've done a series on stress reduction and anxiety reduction. I've done a series on um, immune support. Coming up, we're going to be working with clarity of mind and with physical body systems. So, you know, you can pick kriyas or sets to work really specifically in a potent pinpointed way. When we talk about Kundalini, people are like, isn't that a snake? What's that snake energy? And really it's just your inner energy. And so even if you did the meditation today and you noticed that you felt one way before the meditation and then you felt one way after the meditation, that's you moving your inner energy. That's you doing this practice in order to create a shift, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about. How can we use our inner energies? How can we bring more kundalini energy, more liveliness in our inner energy and direct that energy in a certain way so that we get a particular impact? Um, mm -hmm. So the practices include more mantra, more breath, and more meditation than you would normally do in um, a vinyasa class. Um, but, you know, it's just a different way of working and you get a little bit of a different impact. They say that it takes, I don't know, something like seven years of vinyasa yoga to have the impact of one kundalini class. So it's like, do you want to go from Akron to LA in a car or in a jet engine? So mm. it's just, and you'll feel when you, when you come to a class, it's like, whoa, wow. And at first it can be really overwhelming. And then you learn how your body works and where the blocks are and how you can clear and, and get um, stronger in your practice. So mm. yeah, does that help? Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that that was really beautiful. And, and just a nice way to share just another path in the yoga journey. Right. And, and, and one that, you know, utilizes a variety of different techniques for movement, for breath, and, and technologies to move energy in the body. So, um, yeah, the I. The Q&A on the website. So the Q&A on the website would have like probably a lot more information than I'd want mm -hmm. to articulate right here, so. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to learn more about that, feel free everyone to tune into Tracy's website. Again, on Facebook, um, um, we'll have some dialogue going on there if people want to engage. And um, I just want to, you know, wrapping it up, I just want to give really a, a special thanks to, um, uh, first to our uh, administrative technology support we got Claire on Zoom and Jordan on Facebook. And we just, we couldn't do this without you. Um, I wanna give a special thanks to everyone who's tuned in um, to really support and still be a part of this movement. Um, I know someone asked on Facebook, since the event is canceled, how do we stay connected to Elevate Akron? And um, with this HEAL series that will run all summer, Sundays at noon, um, as well as if you wanna join in as a sponsor, volunteer, or a nonprofit partner, We'd love to have you. We'd love to feature you. Um, so, uh, and, and I really just want to give a really big special thanks to you, Tracy, um, for not only just your lessons today and, and, and guiding us towards, you know, how, you know, service plus connection equals health, but also to just really starting this movement and being an inspiration to so many. So uh, I want to thank you for that. <laughs> I'm honored to be here today, and I'm really, really grateful for um, all you're doing to move it forward, <coughs> excuse me, forward in a really relevant way. So mm -hmm. you're making it more about what you can do than what you can't do, and that is just role model, hero mm -hmm. behavior. So thank you to you and the whole committee for holding that kind of energy. Keep elevating Akron. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, have a, a wonderful rest of your day. Again, um, like, comment, and share if you want to be entered into the prize, and we'll announce those on, on Monday. And if you want to tune in more with Tracy, um, feel free to connect on there, and we'll engage right after this. So have a good day. Awesome. Satnam. Satnam. <laughs>